Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this 18th day of June, and this is Tuesday, 2024, and today's topic is titled, Chickens or Eagles, and the passage is from Philippians 4, 13, but we know we need to keep uh, these passages in their context, so we'll look at the context of um, Philippians 4, around uh, verse 13, above and uh, below, so you know uh, what... uh, things you can do through Christ, which strengthens me and you. And so, and can't just do anything. It's not like you can jump off a roof and be like, Christ, I can do through all things through Christ, which strengthens me, splat. <laughs> all right? Or, you know, it's certain things you got to do, and it's in the Bible. And we'll go over that here in a, a few minutes before we get into the topic. But first, as always, I'd like to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he too can be your Lord and Savior today if he's not already. And that is the most important thing you can ever do is trust Jesus as your Savior and he'll wash away your sin, give you eternal life, and then he'll show you how to live for him as you desire to do so. Hope you just don't get saved because you want to um, escape hellfire, which um, when we all get saved, or most of us when we get saved, it's a selfish thing because we don't want to go to hell and die in our sin. We want to be saved so we can avoid that and then we just want to keep living however we want. And doing what we want and not doing what uh, the Lord wants us to do. And it's an ongoing thing, a daily battle between the flesh and the spirit. And so let's not give into the flesh all the time or any of the time. And uh, learn to allow the spirit to rule and reign in our hearts and our lives and our um, thoughts and all that. And, of course, our life is not our own. As the Bible says, it belongs to the Lord now. So let's um, act like we belong to the Lord and stop uh, giving into the flesh and all that into the world and the devil and everything else so amen and i'm talking to myself too preaching to myself so if you're thinking well why are you preaching to me and not yourself i am preaching to myself and i'm just as guilty as any of you all out there so amen so uh and so if any of nobody else listens to this uh i hope that uh i'll listen to it <laughs> yeah so and today uh scripture song is a good one from proverbs 4 23 and we'll get into that now and sing that and then we'll get into the topic so here we go proverbs 4 23 with brother dean and sister patty runyon and all right <clears throat> proverbs 4 23 keep, keep thy heart, heart with, with all diligence, diligence. yeah it's a good thing to do are the issues of life yeah <laughs> Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of out of it are the issues of out of it are the issues of life. That's right. It sure is. So we got to keep our heart with all diligence. We're out of it are the issues of life. That's the truth there. So we'll put that back to yesterday's scripture song and do the scripture songs again at the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into today's topic titled Chickens or Eagles? Question mark. And Philippians 4.13 is the passage. But let's go ahead and read the passages before so we understand the context of Philippians 4, and let's get there, Philippians chapter 4, went a little bit too far there, all right, so Philippians 4, all right, I keep wanting to, keeps wanting to go back to Galatians, so Philippians 4, and let's uh, go ahead and let's see here, how far do we want to go down here, so we'll start in, um, let's see, Oh, nice. Read the whole entire chapter so you can get the whole entire chapter. So let's go ahead and read it really quick. So it says here in verse 1, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and longed for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Euodius uh, and beseech Syntactus that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel with clement also and with others my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice 
Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in all, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And I think verse 7 is where we start um, in the context of, uh, um, of uh, verse, um, where is it, verse 13. So I think it starts in uh, verse 7 here. I could be wrong, but uh, anyway, let's continue on. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I seek in, or excuse me, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. So yeah, I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. So it's actually right here in verse 12. I think it's in verse 11. So verse 12 is actually the the context here. But um, uh, you can take uh, all the way up to verse 8 probably. But uh, verse 12 I think is where it actually starts in the context. And then so again it says I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me notwithstanding ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, and odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father by glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you. All saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So that's the entire chapter there, including the uh, context with uh, verse 13. So, amen. So now you know the context there and the entire chapter. Let's get into the topic now for today, chickens or eagles. And again, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And those things are found in verse uh, 12 and uh, a little bit above and below. So let's see here. Today's author is D.O. That would be the initials for, I believe that's Don Oam. And he is retired. San Antonio, Texas is where he's from. So let me read you this topic here that he wrote on chickens or eagles. All right. So he writes here, the story is told of a man who put an eagle's egg into the nest of a... Uh, yeah, a nest of a nesting hen, and the eaglet hatched and grew up with the brood of chickens. All of its life he did what the chickens did, scratched in the dirt for seeds and insects, clucked and cackled, and never flew more than a few feet off the ground, and for a very short distance. One day he saw a magnificent bird gracefully soaring in the sky above and asked, What a beautiful creature! What is it called? A chicken next to him said, That's an eagle, the king of all birds. But don't think about it because you 
could never be like him. So the eagle returned to pecking the dirt and died thinking he was only a barnyard chicken. Hmm. I'm sure there's a lesson there somewhere. Uh, who told you that you do not have potential? Yeah, so who told you that? Who told you that you do not have potential? Who told you that you can't succeed in life, ministry, or make an impact? Certainly not God. When God called Moses, Gideon, and Jeremiah, they responded with a list of excuses about why they were not qualified for the job. Moses said, I don't speak well. Gideon said, My family isn't much to speak of. Jeremiah said, I am too young. However, God said to Moses, I will be your mouth. God said to Gideon, Go, have I not sent thee? And God said to Jeremiah, Say not, I am a child. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver. God spoke to their destiny that was designed by him, and he would, would provide. Right? So, be encouraged is how he concludes this. So, amen. So, if you uh, don't think that uh, God can use you, he can. And he uses all these men, and these men were nothing special. They were just ordinary men like you and I, or women you like like you, and uh, they, he can use you as you're willing to be used, so don't make excuses of why you can't be used, or uh, go by what somebody told you, that you can't do this or that, and you can, and God will allow you to, um, whatever ministry you want to um, do for the Lord, the Lord will put you there if you desire to be there, and sometimes the Lord will put you places you don't want to be, but you should be willing to go wherever the Lord wants us to go, and do His will, and so, amen. Good little topic there. And so, we can all be used to the Lord as we desire to and let, allow the Lord to use us. And he will use us. So, all right. If you're, and of course, you got to be obedient and all that. And um, go where the Lord will want you to go and all that. So, amen. Okay, so that was that topic there. And now let's get into the Daily Strength Volume 2 book. As we are continuing on this second week of giving week 20 and this book is written by Douglas D. Stoffer and Andrew B. Ray and today is Tuesday day 136 titled always give according to your ability and Deuteronomy 16 17 is the passage and of course we know that we need to look at um, these uh, scriptures here in the Old Testament and keep them in their context and, and as I said before but we won't have time to read the whole entire chapter, but I encourage you to read it on your own time to know who God is speaking to and how we can apply it to our lives in practical and spiritual ways. So it says here in Deuteronomy sixteen seventeen, Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. And that's true, so give as you're able. And uh, so that's the passage there and then introductory thoughts says this every person cannot give the same amount but every person can give according to our passage every man shall give as he is able because some people might use this as an excuse not to give the lord further states that giving should be according to the blessing of the lord thy god which he hath given thee and that can be money or time or whatever he's given you uh, there so, amen. All right, the New Testament repeats this same principle in 1 Corinthians 16, 2. Every man is to give as God hath prospered him. The book of Acts gives a practical example. In Acts eleven twenty nine, the disciples sent relief to their brethren, and every man did so according to his ability. Each believer should give to the Lord corresponding to how the Lord has prospered him, right? So that's good introductory thoughts there. Now let's get into the devotional thoughts for children. And of course, you can apply this to adults uh, also. So it says, if you earn 10 pennies, you set aside one penny for the Lord. If a friend earns 20 pennies, he owes the Lord two pennies. Read 2 Corinthians 8.12. So let's look at that really quick. 2 Corinthians 8.12. All right, Second Corinthians eight twelve. So let's go there. So Second Corinthians eight twelve, 
and it says here in verse 12, and of course, again, read it in its entire context here, but we don't have time to do all that today. So verse 12 says, um, for if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. So, and so on and so forth. So that's the passage there. And let's see here. All right, so we read 2 Corinthians 8, 12, and it says, In God's eyes you both gave equally. You both gave from what the Lord allowed you to earn. So, good there. And now for everyone, it says, Has God prospered you? What is your ability to give? Could you give more than you are currently giving? Do you think it would please the Lord for you to increase your giving? Do you give to the work of the Lord? If not, can you honestly say that God has not given you the ability to give? Is it possible that your priorities could be off balance? Hmm. Oh, good questions there for all of us to meditate on and ask ourselves. So that's for everyone. And now the prayer thoughts. It says, ask the Lord to enable you to give more and then ask God to show you if he is pleased with how you are giving. And then the song from the book is titled Living for Jesus. So that would be the second hymn today. And so the first hymn, I did recognize the instrumental, but I can't remember the actual name in the original uh, hymn here. So maybe you'll remember it as you hear it. So I was going to try to look it up, but I'm going to have to keep on hitting the... Um, replay uh, button here until I get the tune down so this is um, titled Rejoice in Hope Rejoice with Me and this is another one of these The Hope of the Saint Hymns a spiritual song written by Charles Wesley who lived from 1707 to 1788 and then James Leach 1762 to 1798 and so we're going to try to do this the best we can so all right, so here we go. Let's see here. How can I do this? Let me uh, do this here. All right, so I do apologize if I'm a little off a little bit. So we're going to try this until I get the, the tune down here. So here we go. All right, one, two, three. Be happy sinners here. The prisoner of the Lord And wait till Christ appear According to his word Rejoice in hope, rejoice with me We shall from all our sins be free Rejoice in hope, rejoice with me We... okay We shall from our sins be free. Okay, so, all right, so that's the tune there, but it's not flowing very well with the with the um, stanzas here, so that would kind of go with this. But anyway, I'm just going to read you the stanzas here, and then we'll move on to the second hymn. So again, uh, stanza one says, Ye happy sinners hear the prisoner of the Lord. And wait till Christ appear according to his word. Rejoice in hope, rejoice with me. We shall from all our sins be free. Rejoice in hope, rejoice with me. We shall from all our sins be free. Second stanza, the Lord our righteousness. We have long since received salvation. Nearer is then when we first believed. Rejoice in hope, rejoice with me. We shall from our sins be free. Rejoice in hope, rejoice with me. We shall from all our sins be free. Stanza 3. Let others hug their chains, for sin and Satan plead, and say from sin's remains they never can be freed. Rejoice in hope, rejoice with me. We shall from all our sins be free. Rejoice in hope, rejoice with me. We shall from all our sins be free. Stanza 4. In God we put our trust. If we our sins confess, faithful he is and just from all unrighteousness. 
to cleanse us all, both you and me, we shall from all our sins be free. To cleanse us all, both you and me, we shall from all our sins be free. Hallelujah. Stand to five. Surely in us the hope of glory shall appear. Sinners, your heads lift up and see redemption near. Again I say, rejoice with me. We shall from all our sins be free. Again I say, rejoice with me. We shall from all our sins be free. Stanza six. Who Jesus suffering share, my fellow prisoners now. Ye soon the wrath shall wear on your triumphant brow. Your triumphant brow. Rejoice and hope. Rejoice with me. We shall from all our sins be free. Rejoice and hope. Rejoice with me. We shall from all our sins be free. Stanza seven. The word of God is sure and never can remove. We shall in heart be pure and perfected in love. Rejoice and hope. Rejoice with me. We shall from all our sins be free. Rejoice and hope. Rejoice with me. We shall from all our sins be free. And stanza eight. Then let us gladly bring our sacrifice of praise. Let us give thanks and sing and glory in his grace. Rejoice and hope. Rejoice with me. We shall from all our sins be free. Rejoice and hope. Rejoice with me. We shall from all our sins be free. Hallelujah. So that's the um, song there, the hymn. And then let me give you the references here. No story for this one. So stanza 1, we have 2 Timothy 1, 8, Hebrews 9, 28, Romans 5, 2. And then stanza 2 is Colossians 2, 6, Romans 13, 11. And then stanza 3, we have 2 Peter 2, 19, Romans 5, 20 to 21. And then stanza 4 is Romans 10, 13, and 1 John 1, 9. And then 1 Corinthians 6, 11. And then stanza 5, we have Colossians 127, Luke 2128, and Philippians 44. Stanza 8 is Philippians 129 and Revelation 210. Stanza 7 is 1 Peter 125 and 1 John 417. And then stanza 8 is Hebrews 1315 and Psalm 30 verse 4. So that is the end of the first hymn there. And we're going to go ahead a little ways to this other hymn. I know we did this hymn not too long ago titled Living for Jesus. So let me close this one here, close that, and then open this one up here. All right, so this is uh, Living for Jesus. This is another good one here. And this is one of these, the Submission of the Saint hymns, a spiritual song. And this is hymn 738 in the book, written by Thomas O. Chisholm, C-H-I-S-H-O-L-M. And he lived from 1866 to 1960. And then Carl H. L Loden, L-O-W-D-E-N. And he lived from 1883 to 1963. So no story for this one either. So, all right. So try not to let the, let the um, thing here. Let me put that down there and press play. All right, here you go. A life that is true Striving to please Him In all that I do Yielding allegiance Glad-hearted and free This is the pathway Of blessings for me O oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior I give myself to Thee, for Thou in Thy atonement didst give Thyself for me. I owe no other master, my heart shall be Thy throne. My life I give henceforth to live, O Christ, for Thee alone. Living for Jesus, who died in my place, bearing on Calvary my sin and disgrace. 
Such love constrains me to answer his call. Follow his leading and give him my all. Oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to thee. For thou in thy atonement didst give thyself for me. I owe no other master, my heart shall be thine own. My life I give henceforth to live, O Christ, for thee alone. Living for Jesus wherever I am, doing each duty in his holy name, willing to suffer affliction and loss, deeming each trial a part of my cross. Oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to Thee, for Thou in Thy atonement didst give Thyself for me. I hold no other master, my heart shall be thy throne, my life I'll give henceforth to live, O Christ, for thee alone. Alright, we're going to go back and do this last stanza here with the instrumental. So, because they only did three stanzas, so stanza four here. Alright, so here we go. Living for Jesus through worse little while, my dearest treasure, the light of his smile. Seeking the lost ones he died to redeem, bringing the weary to find rest in him. O oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to Thee, for Thou in Thy atonement didst give Thyself for me. I owe no other master, my heart shall be Thy throne, my life I give henceforth to live, O oh, Christ, for Thee alone. Amen. So that's a good hymn there. All right, so put that aside there, and that is the end of the hymns. And like I said, no stories for these uh, hymns, but let me give you the references for this second one here really quick, and then we'll move back on to the Scripture songs. So stanza one, we have 1 Corinthians 10.31, Colossians 3.23-24. Stanza two is 1 Peter 2.24 and 2 Corinthians 5.14. Stanza 3 is Colossians 3.17 and Romans 8.17-18. through 18. And then stanza 4 is Colossians 3.2-3 3, 2 3, and Matthew 11.28. And then for the refrain we have Romans 12.1, Titus 2.14, and 1 Peter 4.2. So that is it for the hymns for today. So we'll put that aside for right now and we'll grab the scripture song book and do the scripture songs again. So here we go. All right, so yesterday's scripture song from the 17th, let me turn back a page here, is Proverbs 4, 14 through 15. So let me press play and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty Proverbs Runyon. Proverbs 4, 14 and 15. Enter, Enter not, not into, the into the path of the wicked, and, and go, go not in the way, way of evil men. Avoid, avoid it, pass not, not by it, it. Turn, turn from, from it, and, and pass, pass away. away. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Enter
turn not into the path of the wicked. Enter not into the path of the wicked. And go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Alright, now today's one more time. Proverbs 4.23 Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of out of it are the issues of out of it are the issues of life. All right, so good things to keep in mind there and meditate on. All right, so that is about it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the Baptist bread and then the Daily Strength Volume 2 uh, um, passage for tomorrow because tomorrow is uh, uh, church night, so no devotional for the actual topic for the Daily Strength Volume 2 book for tomorrow and then the hymn for tomorrow. I might have to pick another hymn. I'm not sure if this one is going to be able to have find an instrumental for that one or not, but uh, we'll um, maybe pick another one for tomorrow as a second hymn. So, alright, tomorrow is the 19th already, and Proverbs 4.26 is the passage, and it says, Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. So that's another good thing to take heed of. Um, Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. So, amen. Alright, and then the topic for tomorrow is Baptist bread is going to be titled The Believer's Source. And Acts 1 8a is the passage. And we'll go through the book of Acts, chapter 1, to get this in its entirety and all that. So tomorrow's author is um, DB. That would be the initials for David Brown. Not the David Brown of the Bible Baptist Church, but a different David Brown. And this David Brown is pastor of Central Baptist Church in Decatur, Illinois. And we have our own brother David Brown. He's the youth pastor slash assistant pastor at the Bible Baptist Church in uh, Deland, Florida. So, um, but this is not that David Brown. This is a different David Brown. So, amen. Um, and so he's the author for tomorrow's uh, topic, The Believer's Source. Acts 1-8a is the passage. So that's uh, for tomorrow's Baptist spread. And then tomorrow, like I said, is no devotional topic for tomorrow because uh, it's a church night in the book here and it's a day 137 church night and we have the passage for 1 Corinthians 13 3 so I'll read you that passage uh, tomorrow from the Daily Strength Volume 2 book by Brother Stoffer and Brother Ray and then the hymn for tomorrow is going to be titled Hope My Soul Thine Anchor Is and actually this does kind of sound familiar so this is uh, hymn 777 and this is another one. He's the Hope of the Saint Hymns, a spiritual song written by Thomas Kelly. So no story for this one, but there is uh, some recommended tunes here. So let's, we'll try to look for one of those. Uh, there's uh, The recommended tunes is number 697, number 655, and number 836 in this particular book here. So if you have a copy of that book, you can look those up. So those are recommended tunes. So maybe we'll look up one of those tunes there for that one. And so that's the book here. This is the cover of the book, the ones I've been using. The dark blue uh, co uh, cover here. And there's also a brown cover and then a lighter bluish grayish cover. And then there's a leather bound edition. And also a spinal edition, which is this type of uh, side backing here, which would replace this type of backing if you're wondering what I'm talking about there. And so whichever one you prefer, you want to get a copy of both uh, they're available there on the website i'm about to give you here and this is the daily strength volume two book there's four volumes to this series of books and good devotionals in there topics for each uh, week and 
Then it goes up to 52 days for a part of the year. And all those books can be found at MelodyPublications.com. is the website there to order those. And then the Scripture Song book and CDs, they're available online at www.DailyScriptureSongs.com. That's Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website, Missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. And so I think Sister Patty's back over there right now. I haven't heard any update on whether she made it or not or if she had decided not to go yet. But um, a couple of days ago, Brother Dean had posted something about her going back to Guyana um, around... Uh, right now, so um, taking a, a young gentleman with her, and I believe she's going over there to get prepared for the VBS and some other things uh, there, and she'll be there through the mo- uh, end of the month of July, so pray for her and for Brother Dean and his uh, pain that he's been going through, and Lord continue to use him as he is able to, and um, and the Lord can heal him as he sees fit, so pray for them as they're apart for right now, and the uh, mission work continues on over there. So, amen. So that's how you get the Scripture Song book and the CDs. And there's also some Scripture uh, card games there on the website and other information about their uh, mission work over there in Guyana, including the latest prayer letter. So uh, you can read that on the website. Or if you have um, them as your friend on Facebook, you can look, um, look them up that way and read the latest prayer letter on there. So, amen. All right. So that's that information. And then the Baptist Bread book. This is the cover from last month and this month. So if you order now, you'll get the one for July and August. And it comes in a box of 10. And it's twelve ninety five Every other month, you'll get a box of these sent to you. And it's um, uh, baptistbread.com is the web, uh, the website there. And then it's um, second website is www.timgreenministries.org. And that other website has other books available to order if you see anything on that website you like. So that's that information. And then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God. This is the first book we should be getting in and to and reading it and studying it and showing thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth and going to God in prayer and seeking his face and everything and all that and having a good solid relationship with the Lord. So that's the Bible there, King James Bible. And then the other broadcast that I do that I like to mention here I do this second broadcast is uh, I've been reading through Brother James's book on Genesis, part of the Christ Honoring Commentary series, and this is a devotional type of uh, commentary where he goes through different topics and outlines each and every day. And we have reached today is the 18th and went through uh, this topic on Jacob and Esau from Genesis 25:19 through 34, and that's already been posted up. So if you missed that uh, one you can go back and watch it and any of the other ones you've missed in the past you can either watch them on facebook or my youtube channel or the youtube channel it's not mine it belongs to the lord and it's all the lord's word anyway i'm just reading it and reading these studies from different uh men um that write these books and these devotionals so and try to give extra from what i've learned from brother james and his teaching and preaching of god's word and other men um throughout the the years I've been going to the Bible Baptist Church, so amen for all these men that write these uh, books and do these preaching and teaching of God's word. So praise the Lord for them. All right, so that's Jacob and Esau, Genesis 25, 19 through 34, and the other broadcast on the book of Genesis that I've been reading through. So that's that, and you can get Brother James's books online at www.jameswnox.org or go straight to the store part of the website, which is store. Dot jameswnox.org and look up his books and other materials that way and preaching and teaching of God's word both audio and video and then the YouTube channel for the church website or the church is James Knox Sermons YouTube channel and so that's how you can look up the video format of the sermons both past and present and then for the YouTube channel um, that I do is uh, Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting or typing in Baptist Bread Broadcast and look me up that way and like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when I'm posting those up on that uh, YouTube channel there. So, amen. All right, well, that'll be about it for today. So thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you. Until next time, bye-bye for now.